Verse 10. Let's look at our father Abraham because he came from the lineage of Shem. Shem. You got to know, first of all, you got to know the players of the book to understand the book. If you don't know the players, if you don't know, don't know the actors, if you don't know who are these people, you'll mess it all up. That's right. You'll be sending money over there to the fake Jews. They say, they are God chosen people. Just like all these Sunday churches do. They go to them. They don't come to us. They're going to be shocked. They find out they was an Israelite. Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Go ahead. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. Yes, sir. And Shem lived after he begot Arphaxad mm -hmm. 500 years and begot sons and daughters. Yes, sir. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begot Salem. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And Arphaxad lived after he begot Salem <laughs> four hundred and three hundred years and begot sons and daughters. This is the lineage of Shem and all his people, all his children. And you jump down, we're going to jump down to verse 25 to show you that our father Abraham, I want to skip that. Our father Abraham um, came from Shem. Verse 25, go ahead. And Nahor lived after he begot Terah in 119 years and begot sons and daughters. So Nahor lived and got Terah and lived 119 years and they got sons and daughters. Terah is the father, is the father of Abram. Go ahead. And Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram. Uh -huh. And Nahor and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Abram Nahor, Haran, and Haran begot Lot. Yes, yes sir. I understand this. Haran was Abraham, I mean Lot was Abraham's cousin. He wasn't his nephew or it was his cousin. Well, excuse me, was his, his uh, nephew, excuse me, I didn't want to do my cousin. Nephew, he was his nephew, not his brother, that's what I meant to say. Go ahead. And Haran, and Haran died before his father, Tar Taran, uh -huh. in the land of his nativity, the the uh -huh. in Europe of the Chaldees. This is the earth of the Chaldees. This is where Abraham came from, where God brought him out of the land. He came to gather. Go ahead. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. Yes, sir. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. The daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Issachar. So basically, we know these two names. Abraham and Sarah, they was our great-great-grandmother and grandfather. Grandfather. These are the, this is the nation that Israel was birthed from. Because we got to make sure we understand who did God choose and what did God give them. Go ahead. But Sarah was barren. She had no child. Sarah couldn't have children at the time. Go ahead. And Sarah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son. Uh -huh. And Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan. They came unto Haran, unto Haran, and dwelt there. This is what God called Abraham out of Ur the Chaldee. He called him to the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan is another name for Africa. He gonna give Abraham all of this land. <coughs> you feel me that? Go ahead. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter twelve and verse one. Let's see what land did God give Abraham and his children for being obedient. He didn't give us heaven. He didn't give us the third heaven where the angels and God and Jesus is. He gave Abraham and his seed this land upon this earth, which is in Jerusalem. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country mm -hmm. and from thy kindred from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Understand what God called you, man? When God called you or any Israelite, he gonna take you from your, your, your people. Because most of the time, our people are deep in paganism. Deep in it. Look at all of us, what we came out of. Came out of Christmas, came out of Easter, came out of all this, so we had to get out of there. He do it, 
exact same way with Abraham like he's doing it with us. Go ahead. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Yes, sir, he's going to make a great nation. But Abraham ain't got no kids. Go ahead. And I will bless them that bless thee, mm -hmm. and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the other earth be blessed. This is how it's supposed to be. But our forefathers just rebelled, disobedient against the law like they're doing today. He said, I'm going to bless them to bless you if you obey my law. And it's, we still got a little mm -hmm. glimmer of that right now. The ones that follow the law, I know I, I can testify to that. People bless me. I don't know why sometimes they just give me favor. Excuse me, I'll take that back. I do know why. Because of what I'm doing with your serving the law. Go ahead. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Yes, sir. And Lot was with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Go ahead. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, uh -huh. and all their substance that they had, that, that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. Land of Canaan, go ahead. And to the land of Canaan they came. This is the land that God called them to, which is the land of Canaan, which is modern day Africa today. That's Ham land. He gonna give it to us. Go ahead. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem. Sichem? Oh, Sichem. Okay, go ahead. Unto the plain of Mora. Uh -huh. And the Canaanites was then in the land. You know who the Canaanites are? Those of the Africans. They was in the land. Go ahead. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Unto thy seed will give what? This land. This land. But the land don't mean nothing to our people today. They don't care. Go ahead. And there build, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. So he telling Abraham unto this land, which is the land of Canaan, which is the promised land, where where he got Mount Zion, uh, 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 Zion from, or Mount of Olives. At, this is the land he said he gonna give you all of that. Understand, Israel is connected to Africa. It ain't like it's separate from Africa. Period. If you look at them out, look at it. He said, I'll give you all this land. And believe me, people don't understand how big Africa is. You can put three or four United States inside of Africa. It's just that big. Go check it out. Don't, don't look at this map they give us in the world. They always try to make themselves look like they the same size of our homeland. No. Africa is huge. Let's go to Genesis chapter 15. I'm just laying a little foundation to let you see what a God promised our forefathers and their children that we neglect. We neglect this stuff. You don't never hear this in the churches. Oh, we ain't got to do that Old Testament no more, for brother. That been done away with. We ain't got to lay in yet. We ain't got it. Genesis chapter 15 to 1. But now Abraham believed God, but he had a question, man. He was like, son of God, okay, you give me this land, but I don't have something that I need. <laughs> Genesis 15 and 1, go ahead. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham, up to Abel in a um, vision, saying, Fear thou, Abel, I am thy shield, and thy exceedingly great reward. Yes, sir, understand that. He tells him, look, man, I'm your protection. If you follow me, I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. Will you roll with me? I got you. People don't roll like that with God. They're scared every time they hear a little fella drop. If they can hear it. <laughs> Go ahead. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eliezer Eli 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 uh -huh. of Damascus. He said, man, I ain't got no children. But you, tell, you promised me all this to my seed, but I don't have a children. I'm going to leave it to one of my servants. God said, don't worry about that, I got that. Go ahead. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my head. My head. Mm -hmm. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be, the, be thine head, mm -hmm. heir, but he that 
shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. And so he said, look, this man, what you talking about, Eleazar, he said, he's not going to be your heir. It's going to be somebody to come out your own bowels, come from you. Understand that. Go ahead. And he brought him forth aboard, aboard, and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. He said, man, if you can number these stars, you can count how many children you're going to have. And you know we can't count that. There's a lot of us. A lot of us that have been here and have passed away. You got generation upon generations. We just looking at these 2,000 years right here, back before they started counting time. But anyway, go ahead. Six. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed in the Lord, and he counted it for righteousness. Go ahead. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the shadow of to give thee this land to inherit it. Give him what? This land. This land to inherit it. Stop worrying about the United States. Stop worrying about Trump. Stop worrying about the health care. Stop worrying about all this stuff. Worry about this, the promised land, what we got to have. Right here, we trying to get here. We got some land that we got to pay taxes on. Boy, you just don't, people that pay taxes, they don't understand this. It, this is, they never want you to stop paying for nothing in this land. Never. But right here, all we got to do is to make sure we follow the Lord's commandments and come up for them feasts. We good. But this is what he's saying. He said, give him the land to inherit. That's what he gave Abraham. We've been showing him what he's going to have and what he's going to leave to his children. Go ahead. Verse 8, okay. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit? He said, Lord God, how am I going to inherit? Because he ain't got no kid. Go ahead, jump down to verse 18. Listen to what he said. Go ahead. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abel, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land mm. from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. What is the river of Egypt and the river Euphrates? That's all in Africa. The word, that's what they call it, Africa, but they, God called it Canaan, the land of Canaan, which is the land of Ham, Ham, if you want to call it, other Africa. He said, look, man, I'm giving you all this right here, and I'm giving it to your seed, which is your children. This is the promised land that I'm going to give to you, but you got to obey to give it. You finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Genesis chapter 16 and verse 1. Now let's see which one of Abraham's sons is going to get this land. Because they fight over it now. And the one that should be inquired by it don't even care about it. Don't even look at it on the news. Got stuff going on in the land. Bible prophecy where they trying to set up and burn the red heifer. The, the, uh, the sanctify the temple, all the land, and all this stuff. They about to be in the third temple now. They about to get into it now. We gonna live it. We living into these these times, but I ain't put no day on it. But it's close. Get your mind into this. Genesis chapter sixteen, verse one. We just laying some foundation. To let you know that who the players are. Don't nobody know who the players are in the Sunday church. You know why? Cause they trying to get their stuff. They're trying to get their blessing. He never talked about no blessing. This is a blessing right here. Money ain't gonna count. At this time, when we get the land. Genesis chapter 16 and 1. Go ahead. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, made him no children. Mm -hmm. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Go ahead. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Uh -huh. I pray thee, go in into my maid, and it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. See, this is the thing, man. Don't try to step before God. God said, man, y'all gonna have children. But Sarah went in and said, hey, you know, I got a plan. Go in and sleep my, uh, my handmaid. You can have some children, we can have it. That ain't what he told you to do. This is why they warned over that day. 
Because Hagar's son Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. And he thinks that that's his land because he's Shemitic. He's from the line of Abraham. Then you got our twin brother, which is Esau, who taking our identity and said they are the Jews. He said in his land, waiting on to build the third temple. And guess what Israel's saying? I don't know who landed, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. This is the foundation of our heritage right here. Where it started. Go ahead. It's three. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, uh -huh. and gave her to her husband, Abram, to, have, wife. to be his wife. So he gave, her, gave Hagar to Abram to be his wife. That was his second wife. Go ahead. And he went and unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon thee. Wait, 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 wait. How did you gonna put the wrong upon Abraham? You came up with this. He said, Look, she said, My wrong be upon you. Like, I did this for you. He didn't ask for this. Go ahead. I have given my maid to thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Mm -hmm. The Lord judged between me and thee. Cause it was a real big thing for women back in the to, back in the day to bear children. That was a highlight of their life. It ain't today, but that's the highlight of their life. For some people, I ain't saying all. But the bad children like that, I mean that you did your job as a woman, as a wife. You brought him some children. When you when they couldn't bring them, they felt bad, really bad. But go ahead. But Abram said unto Sarai, uh -huh. Behold, thy maid is in thy, thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt hard, dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Calm down, man. You chopping. Come on, man. I, I call you. They just keep this by your road, man. Come on. All right. This is what he said. Look, I gave, you know, he said, But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, the maid is in thy hand. Do, it, do to her as you please. Like, you do whatever you want to do to her to make peace in the house. And listen to what she did. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to serve. So she kept her out of the house, really, and she was in the wilderness, about to die because she didn't have no water. But go ahead. But the angel of the Lord appeared to her. Abraham. Because that is Abraham's seed. Understand that now. He is the seed, but he's not the seed of the promise. The seed of the promise between hey, seed of the promise between Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and Hagar. But that is his seed. Go ahead. Verse 8. And he said, uh, hey, he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comes thou? And whither wilt thou go? Uh -huh. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. So Hagar tell her what went down in the house with Sarah. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to, to thy mistress. Uh -huh. Submit thyself under her hands. Yes, sir. So he told her to go back to uh, Sarah and submit to her. Whatever she tell you to do, do it. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. This is what he said to Hagar and the seed. Just like Abraham had 12, Abraham, through Abraham and Israel, he had 12 uh, brothers who made up 12 tribes of Israel. Hagar, son of Ishmael, had 12 princes. They the one that run all this all over there. This day stuff. That's Abraham's first son, which is Ishmael. Those are his children. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with a child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Yes, sir. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Understand that Ishmael, he don't play now. He don't play. And he's going to tell you that. Go ahead. And he will be a wild man. His mm -hmm. hands will be against every man, and every man's hands against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And you know, Ishmael, he is wild. He will strap a bomb to himself, run up to a building, and all praise our life, and kill himself. Kill everybody now. And they like to they think, well, when they die, they come back and we promise virgins, and they're going to be promised all this kind of type of land, all this stuff. Just for committing suicide. This man is wild. He hands against everybody. Look at the news. All these uh, 
uh, terrorist thing they do in the, the ISIS and all these people. Hey, Ishmael, those are the Arabs. Be careful when you're dealing with him. He's wild. Go ahead. And she and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. Mm -hmm. Thou God seest me. Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here? Have I also here look after him that see? Uh, he said, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, that thou God seest me, for she said, Hell, I also here look after him that seeth me. God is going to look after Abraham's seed. He took care of them. But that's, you got to understand that those people which is Ishmael's children are fighting on the land today. Where the holy temple was, Solomon, the king, uh, Solomon Temple was, you got the temple of the dump, the, uh, their temple there, the Muslim temple there. And believe me, you go over there trying to take that down, they would blow everything up. So that's really what the third temple is supposed to be, right there. But God said in Revelation 13 or 14, He said, Leave out the outer court Leave to the Gentiles. They're going to build the third temple on the outer court, on the outside. That's when the man is single going to come to the temple of God and say, God. But Israel don't know nothing about this. And these sons of the churches, they don't think this is important. You got to know the players of the book. And Israel, Israel, Abraham, go tell God to let him live before them because he had no child from Sarah. And then God ain't going to let that fly. We finish with that? Go ahead. And Hagar, verse 15, go ahead. And Hagar bear Abram a son. Uh -huh. And Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bear, Ishmael. Yes, sir. And Abram was four score, uh -huh. six years old. Eighty-six years old. When Hagar bear Ishmael to Abram. So Abraham was taking kind of, he was kind of fond of, of uh, Ishmael. That was his first son. So he's going to ask God a question about who he's going to give the land to. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. Go ahead. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram uh -huh. and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Yes, sir. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Listen to what he said. When you are with God, he's going to make a covenant. Just like when you get baptized, you're making a covenant with him. You enter into a covenant with him. If you're not in the covenant with him, he do not know you. He always establishes that. Baptism is part of his covenant now. Everybody got to be baptized. Go ahead. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Let's stay right now. Cool. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Yes, sir. Father of many who? Nations. Nations. Because like I said, Ishmael is come from Abraham. You got Jacob come from Abraham. You got Esau come from Abraham. But you only have one chosen people that are going to get the promised land. And right now, that's our people, Jacob. Go ahead. Five, neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. Yes, sir. But thy name shall be called, shall be Abraham. Uh -huh. For a father of many nations have I made thee. This is what God changed Abram name to Abraham, meaning that he's a father now. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Uh -huh. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And kings shall come out of thee, go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seeds out of thee and their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed out of thee. You see how important it is to be in this covenant. Now, this is not saying that Ishmael C or Esau C can't get in the covenant, but they're going to have to come under the bond of the covenant and follow the law. But they ain't going to do that. A lot of them ain't going to do that. Why? Because they're stuck in Islam, they're stuck in this Judaism, they're stuck in all these other kind of religions. Instead of going to the God of Israel and keeping his law, establish that we are the chosen people. The land is promised to us, and they won't teach that. They will not teach that. Go ahead. Eight. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Uh-huh. What are you going to give them? 
the land whither wherein thou art a stranger. Yes, sir. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. See what I'm saying? This is an everlasting possession. The land of Canaan is ours for the taking. We don't want it though. Some of us in these, a lot of us, 90% of the time the churches want heaven. The third heaven. The other few people don't want nothing more than they get now. Four the acres in the mule. Or they want it now. <laughs> but this is what we are getting to about the seed and what Abraham seed will promise, which is the land. The promised land. Jump down to verse 15. Go ahead. And God said unto Abram, as for Sarah, thy wife, uh -huh. thou shalt not call her name Sarah, Sarah, uh -huh. but Sarah shall her name be. So this is what God changed Sarah's name to Sarah, because she's a mother now. Go ahead. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings of people shall be of her. Yes, sir, because she's going to be a mother of nations. Look at all these nations that were born out of her. Nations of people. Go ahead. 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Mm -hmm. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Listen to one. Then Abraham started laughing in his mind. He listened to God, but he like this, like most of us, just with our mouth like that. But in their mind, they laughed. God see it all. He was laughing in the mind. Like, Man, I'm too old to have a baby. Come on now, and let Ishmael do it. Sarah too old too. Now what God said, it's gonna be a covenant between you, Abraham, and Sarah. They, your seed is gonna get the promised land, which is in Jerusalem. Go ahead. And Abraham said unto God, oh that Ishmael might live before thee. So he put Ishmael up, let Ishmael do it. Cause we too old. Well listen to what God said, go ahead. God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Yes, sir. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. See what he said? A covenant. And the covenant with his seed, if we take on the covenant. If he put it out there, he said, I said before you, blessing and curse, you choose, I choose. You got to take hold of it. Go ahead. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Yes, sir. Twelve princes shall be shall he begot, and I will make him a great nation. This is what Ishmael, he is a great nation. He owned all the all. Janet Jackson was a man of uh, uh, Ishmael, uh, Arab. She divorced him after <laughs> five years or something and got that bread. That was a crazy prenup. Hey, what, five or six years she get like $30 million or something? That was crazy. But the Arabs, they got that money. They got that all. They got it all. And that was God bless you. The Arabs are Ishmael's seed. And but the covenant wasn't with Ishmael. It was with uh, uh, Isaac. Go ahead. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, mm -hmm. which Sarah shall bear to thee at this set time in the next year. Yes, sir. So God tell him he's going to bear this with Isaac this set time in the next year. Go ahead. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. This is what God told uh, uh, Abraham. That, look, man, Isaac is the one that's going to be the chosen seed, not Ishmael. Just follow what I say. Like most of us, we can't understand how we ain't going to heaven. No. The sea gonna be upon this earth, and the headquarters of God gonna be in Jerusalem. Period. Let's go to Genesis chapter 21. Genesis 21. Let's go see what Isaac gonna be. Genesis 21. Let's go see what Isaac did. These are the players of the book. These, these are the ones that the, the land, the promised land, was promised to. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When we say this, we know exactly what we're talking about. We're not just saying that we don't know our forefathers. At least I'm not saying I know my forefathers and what they did and who I am. But they had some children. Abraham had, as we see, Abraham had a child by, Ish, by Hagar, which was Ishmael, the father of the Arabs. You can look it up for yourself. 
Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord visited Sarah, and he, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Uh -huh. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham his son in his old age. Yes, sir. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. So when God told Sarah and Abraham, it came to pass. She had a son. And but she could hardly believe it. Go ahead. Abraham called the name of his son that was born to him, whom Sarah bare to him.